if you look at the human rights violations taking place in the country, you can see that Bahrain is still continuing to live uh, through a human rights crisis. On Sunday, the Formula One Grand Prix will be held in Bahrain amidst global fanfare. But the situation is far from calm in the small Gulf Kingdom. Since the opening of the F1 event on April 17th, Bahrainis have taken to the streets. They accuse Formula One management of ignoring human rights abuses in the country. Last year, Vice News travelled undercover to Bahrain to witness the government's brutal suppression of pro-democracy protests, which kicked off in 2011. On April 2nd, just weeks before the F1 opened, Bahraini authorities arrested Nabil Rajab, one of the country's most prominent human rights activists, on charges of insulting the kingdom. <laughs> Prior to his arrest, Vice News met with Rajab at his home. I remain one of very few human rights defenders who are speaking from inside the country. The majority of them are behind bar or they are in exile. So now, if they keep me in jail, so you can say they almost silence the whole human rights community in this country. And that should not go with the silence of a respected government. We have a, a negative past with the Western government who does respect the human rights in their own countries, but when it comes to the outside, uh, they see their interests. I mean, I would say specifically United Kingdom. Just days before Rajab's arrest and amidst mounting pressure, Formula One management issued a statement pledging to respect human rights in Bahrain and monitor F1's impact in the country. So the Bahraini authorities, during the Formula One, they want to portray a country that is at peace with itself, which is not the case if you look at the human rights violations taking place in the country. If you look at the fourth anniversary of the protests of 2011, just a couple of months ago, you can see that Bahrain is still continuing to live uh, through uh, a human rights crisis. Formula One comes at a critical time in British-Bahraini relations. In December, Britain announced a landmark deal to build a permanent naval base in Bahrain, where the United States Navy hosts its fifth fleet. Last year, the UK named Bahrain a priority market for weapon sales. In London, dissidents continue to criticise Britain's conduct in Bahrain. This month, activists protest the arrival of Prince Nasir bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who is accused of involvement in torturing prisoners. Where is the coward? The torturer, Nasser bin Hamad. Democracy, democracy! Democracy, democracy! Nasser, known as Bahrain's Playboy Prince, had his diplomatic immunity stripped by a British High Court last year, but he continues to visit London. UK government, you will see! Bahrain will be free! There is a strategic interest between the UK and Bahrain, and because of the UK silence, it's not only silence at this stage. UK is playing a misleading role to the international community, and right now Bahrain is building them a base, and this is just like a paid off. As Sunday's race approaches, the pressure is on Formula One to honour its newfound commitment to human rights in Bahrain. We'll have to wait to see how, what reaction Formula One will have if during the Formula One Grand Prix, if there are human rights violations, if people are being prevented from, from going out to protest, what sort of reaction Formula One uh, will come up with.